So I am going to talk about the endogenous metabolite that regulate the angiogenesis. We did from scratch. We identified that molecule as a angio inhibitor, but uh, we did a lot of work in cancer related one published in science, big, big manuscripts. But later, so Watson asked me uh, who discovered the DNA helicosics in the Mayo Clinic, why don't you check this in uh, macular degeneration related areas because these are angiogenesis inhibitor. Then one of the molecule we tested in that. So before that I am going to give a little bit introduction about the uh, vascular basement membrane because this molecule is coming from the vascular basement membrane. So it is a uh, heterogeneous and highly specialized uh, structure. It is almost uh, present in uh, each and every uh, phyla. And uh, the important uh, structural function of basement membrane is it provides uh, structural support for the cells and compartmentalize the uh, tissue. And also it has a selective uh, uh, barrier for the filtration of the macromolecules and provide the support for the neighboring cells. Most importantly, it uh, uh, stimulates the cell growth, migration and differentiation. <coughs> and as I mentioned, uh, vascular basement membrane is uh, there in every organ. And if you see the muscle, uh, the shape of the muscle gives this uh, strip of structures called muscular basement membrane and uh, epithelial sheet, this red one and uh, eye uh, lens is uh, uh, lenticular base membrane surrounded by a tough structure on the eye and also the sac test is surrounded by testicular basement membrane. Like that every, or every organ have its own uh, basement membrane. And we come to the cross section of the blood vessel, you see the, this uh, tough structure, it will give the shape of the blood because of that it lumen, the cross section, inner endothelial cells, outer peris pericytes. So from this we identified those um, uh, inhibitors. And you see the, uh, if you uh, take out this and extract the vascular basement membrane, it appears like as a network-like structure. And out of that, uh, there are numerous macromolecules. Type of collagen is one of the abundant molecule, about 75 to 80 percent out of the extracellular matrix. Um, and if a type of collagen, because one of the domain, the, this domain we identified as anti-angiogenic and also inhibiting the macular degeneration. And you see there are uh, type 4 collagen have six chains. These six chains assembled in different uh, triple helical fashion. And uh, two alpha 1s with one alpha 2 performs a thread like and this NC1 domains free. And uh, two alpha 3, one alpha 4 and two alpha 5, one alpha 6 forms a uh, triple helical structure. And when um, physiological or pathological conditions, these are uh, matrix is exposed to the um, matrix metalloproteinases or scathops in some proteases. So these are makes pieces, 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 but these domains come into the circulation. But in the matrix, these domains are uh, 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 hidden, but not supposed to expose. But when it is come out of the uh, uh, matrix, then it is coming to circulation and it binds to the integrins and also binding to the MMPs and inhibiting the MMP activation too, but that is a different story. So then uh, how research sets and we are isolated that. So uh, we taken the human placenta, amnion or testes and uh, 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 extracted basement membrane, digested with MMP cocktail contain MMP2, 9, 14 and also some people use it cathepsin 2, how it is going to make pieces. Then pass it through the HPLC, then, we, then identified these domains coming to this, uh, the, this pool and all the domains we cloned. Uh, these are the domains we earlier published in the big manuscript. Now I'm going to talk about that one, uh, alpha 6, and antibody recognized that. And after that, that is the structure of the, all the domain, N-terminal, loop, uh, uh, globular, and C-terminal globular. But both the, these globular domains have anti-angiogenic. Uh, uh, we tested uh, alpha 1 and alpha 3, and alpha 6 also we tested that. And then we expressed in uh, different heterolog systems. Uh, in uh, E. coli 293 and uh, SF9 cells, but uh, some of the molecules we expressed in SF9 cells. But uh, later on, one of the postdocs joined in my laboratory is expert in protein uh, biochemistry. He expressed in uh, backlog, uh, 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 E. coli system and he re resolubilized all the proteins uh, in soluble form and active form. And you see, this is the one of the uh, protein. So, he, he, he cloned and expressed and purified all those things and identified uh, um, allergen-mediated, uh, some allergen-mediated purification and uh, he shown that the purification profile, all those things. And this he cloned in the uh, bacterial system and expressed and 
and after that we pass it through the different uh, uh, columns, especially taken the 95 percent of protein is coming as a inclusion bodies. So only 5 percent that is no more use for uh, lump sum protein. Then uh, he, di he dissolved the inclusion bodies in allergen and mediated buffers and uh, thawing, uh, freezing, thawing, freezing methods. After that he passed it through the various uh, size expression of chromatographic arms. It is Cephidex G100 and uh, this peak was collected and dialyzed extensively and then passed through the uh, Cephidex 200. Then peak was collected, dialyzed extensively to eliminate the pH and resolubilize related things. And then we pass it to the Cephidex D25 finally. This peak was collected and run the all the fractions and this is the purified uh, fraction. That fraction was tested endotoxin levels and also solubility related one. So now we get more than uh, uh, 90 percent of soluble from inclusion of bodies and uh, functionally active one. And then that is the amounts he get. So, so after that he used this protein to test whether this uh, regulate the angiogenesis or not. He taken the choroidal uh, mouse endothelial cells we got from collaborator and tested. Earlier report says that there are a couple of uh, endogenous uh, um, <coughs> peptides. Uh, those are promoting the angiogenesis. So those peptides, he treated the cells with those peptides and, sh and uh, reproduced those results. It is promoting the angiogenesis. And then he see these are the peptides he used uh, kappa elastin, mouse elastin, bioactive peptide here. So you see the kappa elastin, this is the control, positive control uh, with the growth factors, kappa elastin treated and uh, these the three are kappa elastin treated and here he used uh, our protein alpha 6 then it is inhibited uh, um, this one uh, proliferation and similarly mouse elastin inhibited this is uh, mouse elastin alone. This is um, uh, bioactive peptide and treated with these molecules and he used different different doses. Here this is the uh, control it seems to be uh, one do one two three and this is uh, only growth factor related one. So like that kappa elastin, mouse elastin, bioactive peptide uh, mediated proliferation was uh, inhibited uh, by uh, one of the endogenous molecule. That means in the endogenous there is a dynamic equilibrium between uh, inhibitors as well as uh, promoters, angiogenous promoters. And also to test that uh, there is no endotoxin in the protein, he used the polymix in B. Uh, there is no much difference of inhibition compared to the uh, this this one. So it confirms that uh, there, is, there is not much uh, endotoxin is there in the samples. So after that uh, angiogenesis laboratories they did uh, migration proliferation to formation experiments. So there is a Boyden chamber it is uh, less than 200 microliters well size upper 100 microliters lower 100 microliters. Lower you can uh, use the all the chemo tactic related in between there is a 0.8 micro pore size the membrane is there and upper well you can use the medium and your uh, cells as well as growth factors uh, your uh, drugs. So here you see this is the control and the upper well. This is here one we used uh, one of the elastin. It is uh, translocated because of this, this cells is the translocated to the lo uh, lower well. So then we take out the membrane and turn the uh, that one and swap the all the cells. And whatever the cells in the lower surface we stain, upper we will swap with the cotton plug. So like this different doses it was inhibited alpha 6. But another uh, uh, that uh, elastin uh, peptide, this mouse elastin, kappa elastin and bioactive peptide. So three cases the inhibited the tube formation, migration sorry. So then uh, we did the uh, scratch wound assay. Some people mentioned that uh, uh, this is most important because when the cells are got 80 percent confluence uh, in the plate you take the sterile uh, tip and make a artificial wound like this. So these are all the controls. So when we used the different uh, 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 kappa elastins, you see within 48 hours the artificial wound was healed. From here to here cells is uh, transmigrated and filled this gap and these are that. So when we used our molecules, the gaps are not uh, uh, filled, it was inhibited the transmigration of the cells into the artificial wound. So it is conforming it is inhibiting the migration as well as the proliferation. So then uh, we did a tube formation experiment. So matrigel in 24 well plates we coated matrigel and polymerized at room temperature. Then seeded the endothelial cells. You can see a, a very a good tube formation. And when we used the, uh, this is the kappa elastin, mouse elastin, bioactive peptide. 
So when we used our molecule, two doses, it is the breaking the tubes and inhibiting the two formation. So these results confirm that this molecule is a endogenous uh, angio inhibitor. It is inhibiting the choroidal endothelial uh, uh, migration, proliferation, and tube formation. So after that, uh, 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 these kappa elastins and the mouse uh, bioactive peptides promoting the angiogenesis through activating the <coughs> MT1, MMP, or MMP14. Then we uh, did the, some signaling experiments. We treated these cells and, uh, and collected the uh, cell extracts and tested whether the, how it is going to happen. You see here we used uh, kappa elastin. Kappa elastin is control. Kappa elastin promoting the uh, expression as well as the activation of the one of the important proteins. It also playing role in the metastasis too. Later on we find out uh, so our molecule inhibiting the metastasis also, but that is a different story. So when we used uh, uh, different uh, doses, uh, 0.5 to 1, is it inhibited here, and um, uh, it was inhibited. This one, sorry, it is inhibited. And also here, mouse elastin, uh, we, we used the mouse elastin uh, and the bioactive peptide. This is mouse elastin treated alone, activating the MT1 MMP active as well as uh, uh, proform active. And we treated with the two doses, it is inhibited both. And similarly, this one is, uh, uh, kappa bioactive peptide, bioactive peptide activated uh, and expressed MT1 MMP was inhibited both the cases. So then uh, same extract we tested. So if it is inhibited, what is the cytosolic signaling events inhibited by this molecule? So here you see kappa elastin promoting the activation of uh, uh, FAK, AKT, mTOR, K3K, all these uh, uh, phosphorylated signal when we used uh, different doses, it is inhibited by uh, this molecule. And also, and another two bioactive peptides, so mouse elastin and uh, uh, bioactive peptide, it was uh, promoting the, activating the, all these <coughs> signaling, it was inhibited by uh, kappa elastin and here bioactive peptide. So bioactive peptide and kappa mouse elastin mediated uh, uh, signaling was inhibited, that is the reason why it is inhibiting the MT1 MMP. So and also we have, uh, I got a commercial available uh, FAK inhibitor and AKT inhibitor. We tested whether that signaling is working or not. Then we identified that signaling is working. So then after that we prepared a adenoviruses using these molecules because I prepared alpha 1, alpha 3, alpha 6 and we developed a, a hybrid molecule. It's not in the nature. We identified the active domains of all these molecules one after one, we make that as a hybrid molecule. We developed adenovirus initially 10 to the 4 of 10 particles. So when we injected uh, zero day and seven days for uh, laser, in, laser induced CMFMD, but 10 to the 4 of 10 particles not shown any effect. Then we concentrated the virus to 10 to the 4 of 13 particles, and we injected two microliters on uh, day zero, and again uh, after uh, uh, laser induced CNV, and uh, later in seven days, then 14th day, we, we collected the choroid flat mounts, laser induced CNV lesions. Here is showing the uh, uh, brooch membrane, how it is the uh, vasculature. This is the control. You see the numerous vasculature, the, the control virus. When uh, our molecule is there, it is nearly 70% of uh, choroidal neovasculation was uh, inhibited by this molecule. So these are the, some of the uh, uh, preliminary data, but we are doing extensive in uh, metastatis as well as in this. So the summary I need to explain. These are the endogenous molecule regulating the angiogenesis. We first time tested in a, a mice model in choroidal endothelial cells too and also identified the signaling. So as I mentioned in endogenous, uh, endogenous angiogenesis inhibitors as well as uh, promoters are there. Those are regulated by the proteases in physiological as well as pathological conditions that might be the concentration might be different in physiological, pathological conditions. So I want to thank the lab people and I want the, my brand supports. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer.